And on the inside is sent forward along with last year's winner Torcello and Soto Sizzler in blue and white wider out. They immediately climb the hill and racing in fourth place is Saratoga Gold. Agero racing on the outside of Pride of Priory. Pride of Priory in the dark blue, Agero in the half colours of blue and yellow. On to victory is one from the back and Tritonic in the blue and white hoops with the maroon sleeves of the McNeil family last of all. So Goshen adopting his customary front running tactics and leads the right hand turn and soon will be descending down towards the final mile. Goshen scattering the pheasants leads by a length and a half from Torcello in second. Saratoga Gold is in third place and would be a good four to five lengths behind the second place horse at this stage. They're rather more tightly grouped in behind Saratoga Gold with Soto Sizzler racing in fourth place. Fifth for Pride of Priory and Agero as they just move over towards that far running rail. And the last two on to victory and Tritonic as they've reached just about the mile point and climbing uphill steadily now for the next quarter mile. Goshen out in the lead for Hector Crouch and ensuring this is a reasonable gallop. Leads by two lengths from Torcello, who in turn is three lengths clear of Saratoga Gold. Soto Sizzler races in fourth place in the blue colours. Pride of Priory is next in the line ahead of Higero. The last two remain on to victory and Tritonic. So passing halfway, final climb before swinging right-handed and running downhill via the top bend into the straight with five furlongs to travel. Goshen rolling along on the front end from Torcello and the gap between them has grown to three lengths. Saratoga Gold's a little closer to Torcello in third as Tritonic is pushed along at the back of the field. Soto Sizzler in fourth, then Agero up the centre in the noseband. Still Pride of Priory travels okay and the last two remain on to victory. And last of all is Tritonic. So Goshen just moved off the running rail, still gallops on in the lead, has three furlongs to travel, still leading by a clear two lengths. Soto Sizzler, Torcello under pressure down the outside. Saratoga Gold getting onto the tail of the leader. Pride of Priory and Agero yet to stake their claims. And Tritonic having been first off the bridle, running in snatches, but he's going forward with a purpose here. Goshen feeling some pressure. Pride of Priory and Tritonic. Then Agero, Saratoga Gold and Soto Sizzler. On the inside, it's Tritonic. Goshen is digging in and fighting back. Saratoga Gold comes next. A furlong to go. Tritonic by about a head or so. Goshen still not giving up, coming back for one final thrust. But on the day, Tritonic saw off Goshen. Ajero in third, Saratoga goal in fourth. In a great finish for the feature. Max McNeil, how's your heartbeat? Ah, well, do you know, it's, I was just saying, uh, first of all, it's great to be here at Goodwood. I mean, what a fantastic track this is. And, you know, I was just saying to uh, my family there that um, I wasn't really nervous before the race. It's, this was a bit of a pipe opener for us. You know, I don't want to say that disrespectively, but, you know, it's all about, you know, what he does over hurdles. I mean, we might have to rethink that a little bit after that run, but um, I got very excited. Um, um, you know, with the last, with a furlong to go, I must admit, with three furlongs to go, I was a little bit concerned. Holly, sort of, was was out the back a bit. Just gave him a slap round the neck, and uh, and thankfully, he really responded really well. Well, in the blink of an eye, he was being pushed along to suddenly back on the bridle. When did you, exactly did you start to believe? Well, probably not till two furlongs out. But you know, that's why Holly Doyle is so damn good. You know, where uh, she's just so good at what she does. I was so pleased we could uh, we could uh, get her on board Tritonic uh, for this, um, you know, and she just did it extremely well, like she does with with 95% of her eyes. In an ideal world, where would you like Tritonic to be ending his season? Well, I mean, this is the start of Tritonic season. Um, I, I think, you know, I've got to speak to Kingy, the boss, and we'll have a chat with him, and it's going to be an interesting conversation because, you know, obviously we've got the um, the uh, Greatwood at uh, Cheltenham. There's a question mark, what, does he handle Cheltenham? I don't know whether he does or he doesn't. Uh, we've got to have a chat about that, because that's, that's a race that I really would have liked him to go to, but I think there's a no-bander handicap around the same time on the flat. 
you know, I'm, I'm a jumps man, really, but I think we've got to have a serious look at that. So I'll see what Kingy says in the morning or on the way home when I've got a gin and tonic inside me. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens after that. It's weird being in the sun here in October, but the national hunt season looms. Uh, what's the squad looking like? Uh, how many would you have to go to war with? Uh, we've got about 35 or 40 horses. Um, I mean, obviously, Tritonic aside, he's very exciting. We've got a lovely horse with Kingy called North Lodge, um, who we love. I've got a really nice horse with Paul Nichols called In the Waterside, who um, we're very excited about. You know, I saw, it, uh, saw him at Paul's Open Day, and he looks you know, looked very special. We'll see what he does. Um, and there's a horse called Butch, uh, Ollie Murphy's, who um, I think, you know, is doing everything, ticking all the boxes. And finally, I would say there's a horse called Three Card Brag with Gordon, uh, just to pick some youngsters we've got. Um, but we've got a really good team, uh, hopefully. They're all good at this stage of the year. I saw it, AP interviewed yesterday, and he said they're all champions at this time of year. Well, I'm off to go to my tracker. You go get your prize. Thanks. Great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you.